Hi, I'm Mark with At My Home and welcome to our studio. So today I'm going to walk you through everything we do in our post-production as well as our storage solution. So let's get started. Okay, what you're looking at in front of you here is the setup I go through. So let me stand back a little bit so you can see it. All right, but there it is. That's what I look at when I come in the morning. I love it because this is the scene of Italy uh, out, of, out of the three screens here actually show me the whole view I see when we're, we're sitting in Siena, Italy. So that's what I get to enjoy. But let's look at the specs. Let's see what we've got over here. So what you're looking at is three screens, right? In the middle is an iMac. It's a 2020 iMac. It's got the latest generation uh, at the time of the Intel processor, 120 gigabytes of memory and a four terabyte internal SSD. So it's a very fast machine. And Attached to that are two monitors. So I've got two monitors hooked up so that I have this full scene, right? They're all hooked up to the Mac, either directly to the Mac or through a daisy chain of Thunderbolt. Now, also attached to this thing, I have an Elgato Stream Deck that lets me kind of bring up different scenes that I can pre-program so I don't have to go remembering where they are on the Mac. Um, and on the right-hand side is our storage solution. So I have two pieces of hardware here that we use for our storage solution. One is the OWC Thunder Bay Flex 8, as well as the OWC Mini Stack STX. And I'm going to explain these in more detail in a few minutes. So let's go back to the computer and take a look how it all works. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is bring our SSDs and our iCloud uh, uh, videos and things like that into the machine. And uh, there's a couple things, right? One, on the Flex 8 over here, I actually have a couple of card slots, one for a CF Express and the other one for an SD card. And then of course, there's an SD card reader in the back of the Mac. I can use either one. So let's take a look at what the setup would look like though. All right. So here is Final Cut Pro. So that's what we use to edit all our videos is Final Cut Pro. I love this program. It's really easy to use. You can come in here and just scrub along and see what's going on and lay down your clips. So it's nice and easy to use. I have a keyboard, but the cool thing about the keyboard is, check this out. I've got this, well, actually I can show you here. It comes off. It's basically this really cool, like it's like a soft rubber silicon uh, mat that goes on top of your keys. It has all of the Final Cut Pro, you know, keystrokes. So I don't have to remember every one of them because believe me, there's a lot of, key, there's a lot of you know, key tips you can do to, to make the editing go faster. So that's kind of a neat little thing. It, Fits on here really nice, works really well. I really like it. When we're doing this video here is I'm actually wearing a lav mic. And it's part of the Ceramonic Blink 500 Pro set. So we use this whenever we're not filming in the actual filming studio. So it comes with two transmitters. I'm wearing one and one is in my pocket. And this is the other transmitter here. And there's also a receiver and then the receiver is connected up to the camera. We actually are using a, an iPhone right now, my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and we've got the receiver connected to that to, to capture all the recording. And it's really nice because you also have a headphone jack. So for example, Valerie, who's watching what I'm saying, she's wearing the headphones to make sure there's no issues with the sound. And then the other thing that happens is that if I want to do a voiceover, so let's say, for example, around here, we want to do a voiceover, I can actually take the receiver that's currently hooked up to the iPhone and plug it into a connector over here that I now have attached to the Mac and actually do the voiceover. I can either use the, the lav mic or I can use the, re, the transmitter as it is because the transmitter actually has a microphone in it um, and capture that off and be able to finish the edits that we want to do on the projects. On the left-hand monitor, I use this primarily to take a look at what's happening as far as performance is concerned with Final Cut Pro because Sometimes you're doing these videos, it takes a lot of processing power. So I have the computer's monitor up here. I can take a look at all the cores in the machine, as well as all the different apps that are running and there are all the processors that are running the machine. Take a look at that at all, all given times. And that's important because one of the new features of the Final Cut Pro is an AI that cleans up the audio that takes a lot of processing power. And I'd like to be able to know that that's happening. The other thing I have is the background task monitor from Final Cut Pro up on the screen here so I can see when it's transcoding or bringing in data or things like that, keep track of that. And then actually I will look at our two disk drives over here. Well, the one here is the Mac's internal disk drive. 
That's the four terabyte one. I want to make sure I'm not exceeding its size because a lot of times when you're doing Final Cut Pro projects, they can get really large, as well as our backup solution. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So that's kind of what happens over here. And then on the right-hand side, what I do, let me bring this over here, is let's say there's a script like for today. Here it is over here. I can always access it. So if I'm sitting there doing the edits and I want to know what was supposed to be in what order, I can look at this screen and get that. Or any other things that I want to look at, I can look at in that monitor on the side. So it's a nice little setup for doing that. Now, here's the thing. When you create these things, it creates really big files or can be really big files. All right, so let's look at a couple of directories here. On the left-hand side, you're seeing what's happening in our storage unit, and I'll talk about that in a second. On the right-hand side is where we do all editing. So these are all the kind of projects we have currently going on here. Now, if you look at it, I can show you here in the backup, you see this thing, there's a Blackmagic ATEM project. It's 32 gigabytes just to do that project. But if I look over here, it, it's, it's CS2020, I think it's 21, uh, 21, CS2021. It was even bigger. So it takes a lot of space to be able to keep that there. Now, what did we used to do? We used to use these drives, these Seagate drives. You used to pick them up locally. You know, they're relatively inexpensive, holds eight terabytes of data, but you want redundant storage, right? Or redundant, redundant backup. I would have to get two of these every time when they run backup, copying to each of the drives. It's amazing how many drives. This is like, you get the, I think we have like 20 drives or something like that. Now, we don't use those anymore because we now have the OWC Thunder Bay Flex 8. You can see there's eight drive bays in here. And what I have in here is I have four Seagate Exos X18 Enterprise Class disk drives. And we use those for archival backup. And the reason we use Enterprise Class drives is we want these to last for a long time. So these are the four drives here, and we do them in a RAID configuration. Let me show you here using the soft RAID console. If I look over here, there's one called Flex 8 Storage 11-12-2021. I always label them when we actually created it, all right? So this is back in November of last year. Now, what you'll see on the screen here is that here is the, the RAID array. It sits as a RAID 1, which is a mirror. So RAID is a redundant array of independent disks. So basically, remember I mentioned before, I had to have two drives to do things and I had to copy two times. Now what happens is because it's a mirror drive or a RAID 1 configuration, if you notice the green arrow here, it's pointing to two disk drives because these two disk drives on the left-hand side of the, of the Flex 8, those are the RAID 1 or the mirror configuration. So when I copy backup onto these drives, I only have to copy it to the file on the drive it automatically makes a mirror copy of it, so I don't have to worry about that. Plus, they're really big because the drives that are in there, they're six, the ones on the left-hand side, the two here, they're actually 16 terabytes each, so when in a mirror, that means I have 16 terabytes of storage between those two drives. There's also a second storage array, all right? The other two here on the right, bays seven and eight. And again, RAID 1 mirror, all right? And these are a little bit larger. I happen to pick up a larger drive. These are 18 terabytes each, so that's 18 terabytes more of storage. What's amazing, by the way, is I haven't filled up <laughs> the first RAID, so we've got plenty of places to archive off all our projects, right? So the really nice thing about this Flex 8 is it has lots of ports on it. So in the back of the unit, it has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on it, as well as a DisplayPort 1.4 Port, which means if we want to hook a monitor up this display port, we can to the back of that unit. Also, inside the case, it can handle one PCI Express card. Now, we happen to choose a Sonnet Allegro PCI Express card, giving us four more USB-C ports. And then on the front, there's even more ports. There's a two USB-A 3.2 ports. These are 10 gigabit per second each as well as a USB-C 3.2 port, which gives us 10 gigabits per second. So quite a bit of throughput through this box. We have a CF Express slot and an SD card slot. So plenty of things. This thing is really built to really do a lot of things in the studio, which really we've taken advantage of. Now, we connected this up using the Thunderbolt port in the back of the Mac to the back of the Flex 8. And then from there, we went into this box here, the STX box, the OWC Mini Stack STX. 
And then from there, we actually connected up the monitor. If we further look at the Flex 8 over here, on the top, there's four more drive bays. Now, on the four drive bays, I used to have a hard drive in here. That's why there's a label on it. But these three bays here are empty, so we have future expansion capability. And on the left, though, is another thing called the OWC U2 shuttle. Now, OWC supplied this for the review. On this Flex 8, there's actually a difference in the slots. So on the top, there's four bays in the top. There's normally SATA, but they will also handle NVMe cards, right? And on the bottom, there's four more SATA ports. But on the top, these are the ones I want to use. I can put that U2 shuttle card in any one of the four slots, but I want to put it on the left-hand slot of the number one slot because it actually has four PCI Express lanes. Now, I know I'm giving a lot of gobbledygook here, but the bottom line is four lanes is like a four-lane highway. So if you want to move a lot of data, you get a four-lane highway. And so what we've done is in this shuttle, you can actually put SSDs and you can actually put four of them in there. So I put four SSDs. I believe these are 480 gigabyte SSDs each in a RAID 5 configuration yielding 1.44 terabytes of data. So let's take a look again at our, at our soft RAID. You'll see there's four OWC Aura P12 Pro 480 gigabyte SSDs. And these are M2 configurations. Those little, the little, you know, look like gum, a piece of gum. Anyway, we take the four of those and we put it into a RAID configuration, in this case, RAID 5, because we don't want it for storage. We actually want it for performance. So, for example, if we wanted to go and drive a project through Final Cut Pro, not using the internal SSD of the Mac, but use it in the Flex 8, we can use this shuttle here and get really great performance. And at the end of this thing, I'm going to show you some of the performance numbers. That's the U2 shuttle. It's really cool because it just slides into that slot and gives you this capability. Now, the other thing that OWC sent us was the Ministack STX. And this thing here, when we got it, I'm like, well, what am I going to use it for? And then all of a sudden I realized this is cool because the STX actually has four Thunderbolt 4 ports in it. Now, one port is used to talk to the Flex 8, which then talks to the Mac. And we used another port to connect up to this monitor over here. So that allows us to drive the monitor. Now, there's two more ports. And get this. I've got attached to one of them. I have a Samsung T7 SSD, and this sucker is really fast for a portable SSD. So he's hooked up there in case I happen to have data on there, or let's say I want to put the data on there and bring it somewhere else. It's very easy to slip in your pocket and away you go. So that's the STX as far as ports are concerned, but inside the STX is what's really interesting. One thing you can do is you can put a single M2 style SSD in there. And so they also, inside of this, when they did it, they sent us an Aura. Pro 4 from OWC. So this one here is two terabytes in size. So imagine I've got a two terabyte drive in here, SSD in here. So I've got four terabytes in the Mac. And I've got 1.44 terabyte SSD in the Flex 8 and two terabyte SSD in the uh, STX. And that means that if any performance is needed, I've got the capability in all these units. The other thing that's in here is that well, this has been talked about, about an archive type of thing, right? Remember those four drives in the bottom area? Well, the really cool thing is, is that I want to be able to back up the Mac. Now, we use CrashPlan to back up the Mac remotely, but you can also use CrashPlan locally to have it to your own disk drive. So if you do have to restore, it's faster than waiting to come over the Internet. We also have Apple's Time Machine. So what we did, we put a 16 terabyte drive into the, into the SDX, and we partitioned it at two volumes. One volume is used for crash plan, so eight terabytes for that. And the other volume is for Time Machine. So now, in matter of fact, you, if you watch, you can see the light going on right now. The Mac is doing its backups, either crash plan and or Time Machine. And it just in the background goes and keeps us backed up. So I know that that four terabyte drive in here is being backed up at all times, which is really kind of handy. When I back up, I want to make sure I can remember that because six months from now, I might want to get at one of the things we've archived away. Well, I have a spreadsheet over here, and the spreadsheet is where I keep track of it all. So this is a little bit of a manual process, but I always do it when I make the backup. I copy it over. I make sure the copy is finished. I compare the two directories, and then I mark down in the spreadsheet when I did the backup or when the project was completed, 
confirmed that it's been that it's been transferred that's what confirm is and then the name of the project and then what drive it's on so that's kind of how we do the archival stuff that's here so the other thing about the stx that's i think kind of cool is in here i have the backups and i also have that fast ssd in this thing right so i have a lot of disk space here and if I wanted to go on the road, I only need to bring the power brick and I can connect it then to our MacBook Airs. Okay, so let's take a look at this setup and what kind of performance we're getting. I ran the Blackmagic speed test. In the archival, it's the OWC Flex 8. It's the 16 terabyte HDD mirror or hard disk drive mirror. Okay, so I ran the test on it. I just did it on the, on the one mirror. And as you can see, it's about 250, 252 megabytes per second. Right, on the read, it's... Uh, let's see, 153.9 megabytes per second. So not bad, but I'm not trying to be racing here, right? This is not about speed. It's about storage capacity. Then the other thing I have is the backup drive. Now the backup drive, again, is another one of those X18 Seagate Enterprise class drives. And as you can see here, when I run the speed test of that drive, I'm getting again around 250 on the writes and about 254 on the reads. So it's actually on the STX, the SDX is actually faster than the Flex 8 as far as uh, accessing those drives. And I think the, the reason is that this is just being used as a single drive where the OWC Flex 8 is a mirror drive. So this takes a little bit of time because you're doing the mirror. On the performance side of, this, of the fence, if you look at the iMac, the iMac just smokes everything because it's an internal SSD. It's four terabytes, right? But look at it. It's 2,500 plus megabytes per second, right? And 26 plus megabytes per second read. So very, very fast. So if more I can do here inside the machine, the faster the production is going to be on the project. So now if I look at the U2 shuttle, remember the U2 shuttle from OWC is sitting inside of the Flex 8 box here. And when I run that performance on the 1.44 terabyte SSD in the RAID 5 configuration, then I'm getting around 955 megabytes per second write. And I'm getting, oh wow, over 1800 megabytes per second read. Coming down here to the M2, right, or the OWC STX M2 uh, SSD. Remember, it's two terabytes, but it's not in a RAID configuration. It's just a standard drive. Then I'm getting around 680 on the writes, and I'm getting about 780 or so on the read. So it's very fast, but it's not quite as fast as the U2 shuttle because he's not a RAID 5, right? So that's kind of performance there. And then as I mentioned, we do have a Samsung T7 SSD. It's one of the fastest ones we've found for portability. If I just want to bring a small portable drive with me, it's great. And it does pretty good. It's about 622 megabytes on the, on the right and another 846 megabytes on the read. Now, keep in mind, this is our configuration. Your speeds are going to vary, obviously. But it kind of gives you an idea how we've set this up and why we set things up, right? So the archival and the backup, it's not about speed. It's about storage. And then doing projects where we're actually producing things with Final Cut Pro, it's about speed. As you can see, it's a pretty sophisticated setup. And it's taken a long time to figure it all out. And there's a few people that helped along the way. Photo Joseph, Nikki Sun with Tech Nikki Speaking, Jared Poland from fronosphoto.com. And finally, future media conferences because I go to a lot of their different conferences and we meet all sorts of great people that are really experts at things and you can really learn a lot of things from those folks. That's it. That's our post-production setup. So I'm going to put links to everything I described here in the description below. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.